The Moonville has been and still is one of my favorite katanas in the game. Uh, this thing when I got it for the first time I just went with it throughout most of the game. It basically carried me throughout like 50% of the game uh, considering I have changed build a lot to try different ways of playing but the Moon Veil Katana is the one that I use the most. The Jerusalem Moonlight got a nerf from 1.3, right? Patch 1.3, but it still is a very great uh, weapon art if you want to use that. So you have the vertical slash that does the most damage, right? This one is like a heavy uh, attack. And we have the horizontal uh, slash, which does a little bit less damage, but also will probably catch a lot more enemies in the way. So starting off, let's talk about the weapons. Obviously, we have the Moonville. Mine, I have it on plus 10. As I mentioned, it is one of the best katanas, in my opinion, and my favorite so I did put it at plus 10 usually I don't put every single weapon at plus you know the max stat and also we have a cold Yuchi Katana in here also I put it on max which is plus 25 because I do like this Katana also now the Moonville is gonna be the star of the show in here on this build we have it with the attribute scaling of B on dexterity and B in intelligence and E on strength and then attributes required will be uh, 12 on strength 18 on dexterity and 23 on intelligence moving down for the cold uchi katana now there is two options in here you can actually go with a magic uchi katana also that will do a little bit more damage but the reason why i i use the cold the most is because you do have the passive effect of causing uh the blood loss and also the frost bite buildup we do have a stuff in this build we have the Karen regal scepter i have it on plus nine and this one it's actually only good for this build because we have a 60 on intelligence because if you take a look at the attributes required it does require 60 on intelligence so this is a quite high um attribute required staff if you don't have that 60 this is not gonna work so well so you have options of using different uh, staff in here if you are on lower level now once you have this on plus nine the good thing is that the intelligence scaling will be on an S tier now even though we have a staff on this build we're not gonna use it a lot uh, especially because we are focusing on the melee part of the build but we do have it in here in case we need to throw out some uh, range attacks and not only that we do have the options of uh, casting the great blade phalanx for the armor is nothing too special but i did go with a ronin armor just because of look of it uh, at first i had a full set of the ronin armor sometimes i go with that but right now i just have the chest piece and then i have the veteran gauntlets and also the scaled greaves the reason why i have these two because they do look kind of almost exact same on the boots and the gloves but these ones they do have a little bit more uh, defense and that's why i have that much for the mask i do have the okina mask now this one is not exactly necessary but it does give me at three points on dexterity just to make my weapons hit a little bit uh better because you know they both skill with dexterity but like i said it's not necessary uh sometimes i did use the iron cast which comes from the set of the Ronin armor set so you could use this it does give you a little bit more uh, damage negation though so uh this probably will be the best option if you want to be a little bit more tank here now moving for the talismans we do have a few choices in here but this one's in here that you see these are the predominance um this one's the use the most so chart of alexander very very good for this build it greatly boosts the attack power of skills moving for the carrying filigrade crass this one is also pretty self-explanatory it lowers the fp consumed by skills we're going to be using uh, that transient moonlight a lot so it's going to help us uh, lower that amount of cost 
uh, for the FP. The Ritual Sword Talisman, this will raise our attack by 10% I believe when we have the HP at maximum. But if you don't want to use this, sometimes I do switch this one for the uh, Ancestral Spirit Horn. Now this one will give us back uh, 3 FP on defeating an enemy. Now 3 doesn't sound like a lot and it's not but same time if you think about it, if I'm just going around in open world killing small enemies, that's gonna help me uh, getting a little bit more FP back and also, you know, manage that FP that way I don't have to always go and restore. And then when you go to the boss room, you switch and put the ritual sword talisman. Last but not least, we have the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. This one uh, greatly raised attack power with successive attacks. Uh, we do have two katanas in here that we're gonna be spamming. Once our enemy is staggered, instead of going for the criticals, most of the time I just use my both of my katanas to do a lot more damage and also with the chance of procking the uh, frostbite. So might as well have the the Rotten Wing Sword in here to give us more attack damage. Now to talk about the stats, we're gonna come in here on the Academy of the Raya Lucaria. We're gonna use uh, the Queen Regala to show you guys the stats and explain what I use and why I use it. So for the attributes on this build, we're gonna have 40 on Vigor and I do believe 40 is a good amount. I know a lot of you guys like to go 60, I heard, but I'm fine with 40, so whatever you want. If you want more uh, on Vigor, I would say take a little bit out of uh, strength because we don't need strength, strength in here. The reason why I have uh, 16 strength is just because I was using the uh, Dark Moon Greatsword, but if you don't need more in here, you can take some of yours and put it on Vigor. That's another option that you have, but I do believe 40 is good. On mine, I have 30 in here. This is good enough to uh, help us cast that um, Transient Moonlight. Endurance, also we do need some in here though. Stamina will go as we use that Transient Moonlight and also when we're using the double sword, you know, the double katana. So keep that in mind. Having a little bit more stamina in here will help you out on strength like as i mentioned i do have 16 on the build just because i was using the great sword but you don't actually need much only thing you need is 12 to be able to use the moon veil and that's it the dexterity i have 47 in here just because that's the rest of the points right i went 60 on intelligence and then i dumped everything else on dexterity which by the way i could bring it a little bit higher if i'm not using any strength right so that's what i need uh faith and arcane we don't need anything so that's why we have eight in there um now just to clear out uh instead of going a little bit more um, intelligence actually that's not gonna help so much at least on this build and let me show you why let's say for example if I bring it down to 30 on dexterity and bump this up you see our attack damage still not high up there so I don't want to have 80 in here I prefer having just 60 to have a good uh, balance between um, having a good amount of damage with the melee attack and also having a good amount of damage with that transitioning moonlight. Now if you are on level 100, this is the one that I recommend on attributes, 30 on vigor, 20 on mind, 25 on endurance, 12 on strength, uh, we have 30 on dexterity and 46 on intelligence. Now, once we have the 46 on intelligence, keep in mind the staff that we're using right now on the build, that's going to go right out of the build because we have a requirement of 60 for that staff. Even though the staff is not really the, you know, the main part of this build, so you can use any other staff if you want to cast some range attacks in this build. Now, if you are on level 50, this is going to be a little bit harder um, because all these stats will drop a lot lower, right? So I recommend going with 25 on Vigor, 15 on Mine, 18 on Endurance. I prefer Endurance over Mine because uh, the Stamina is going to be uh, honestly most important in here than the FP because we'll use that Stamina a lot more with the um, 
Transgenome Moonlight and also with the double katanas. Strength only 12, that's all we need. Dexterity, we're gonna need 18 to use the Moon Veil Katana, keep that in mind. And Intelligence, we only be able to go with 25. Now for the spells, as I said, uh, we're now really focusing on spells in this build. Uh, we don't use them a lot, at least not as the main source of damage. Uh, we use them sometimes uh, for range, right? So I have the Glintstone Comet Shard, the Glintstone Pebble, and also the Star of the Ruins. And last but not least, we have the Great Blade Palanx. This one is basically uh, to help me out on lowering down that amount of attack that I have to do on the enemies to stagger them with the Transgenium Moonlight. So let's say if the enemy needs like three of the hits from Transgenium Moonlight to stagger it, now we can lower that down to only two because the Green Blade Phalanx will do uh, half of that, right? And also, I forgot to mention the same concept will apply to my Ashes of War that I have on my Uchi Katana, the Glint Blade Palanx. So if I activate that or cast that before I go into a fight, that's gonna lower down the amount of hits that I gotta do with the uh, Transgenium Moonlight to stagger the enemy. So that's the reason also that I have that Ashes of War. Now, if you want to know what I use for the Wondrous Physic mix, I use the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear and also the Thorny Crack Tear. Uh, the Magic one is pretty simple. You know, we have a Magic Weapon. Uh, both of them, as a fact, this will boost our Katanas, uh, the Magic Attacks of them. And then we have the boost for the Successive Attack Power once we are using both of those Katanas. Uh, with the melee attacks so that's what i have in here but another option if i take this out sometimes i might go with a green burst crystal tier this will temporarily boost stamina recovery speed in mixed physic um this is pretty good too for this build especially as i said uh, the stamina consumption of this build will be quite high so we need to have uh, a lot of stamina and recover that stamina quite fast to help us uh, keep on going with the build so yeah guys that's the build that i have for you guys now like i said this build carried me throughout most of the game it's really strong though the uh, moonville katana is still a strong weapon um i still love this katana this is my build for the moonville katana let me know your um options your version of the moonville builds and i would appreciate to hear all of that in the comment section below and i uh, expect more uh intelligence build coming up and also some fate build because i've been enjoying also the fate build so anyways hope you guys enjoyed this video if you enjoyed hit me with a like i would appreciate if you're new subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace